as we have just seen, this thing's got a new feature. It can register hits now. The thing is that it's not going to react about each and every type of hit. For example, if I tap it lightly, move it around, or even kick it, it's not going to trigger. However, with some sharp and really hard hits, just the type created by the blaster, it's going to work extremely well. In fact, it works so well that I can't even comprehend why it was so simple to implement. The rover, whose creators pay me, has got just four new, shiny, and extremely cheap piezoelectric sensors placed here, 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 and here. Those sensors, every time they get hit, create a voltage spike that the microcontroller built into the rover is looking for around 300 times every second. This is basically how the whole system works, and there's not much more to say about it. However, you might be thinking, why are those sensors placed in those exact places? And to be honest, the reason for it is extremely simple as well. These were the only spots with enough space for them to fit, so that I did not have to change anything about the rover. However incidental, this placement works well for my case for a few reasons. First, even though the sensors are only placed on the sides of the rover and not on the front and the back, I can in fact register hits from each and every side. Just like right now when I'm trying to hit the rover from the front, and it does in fact trigger. I believe it's important to notice that during this event, two sensors decided that hey, it was a hit. This one and that one. With knowledge about this behavior and four sensors placed around the rover, I can in fact predict which part of the rover was hit during this event. This data can then be used to assume the position of a possible shooter. I'd like to use it with some sort of UI that could show me which way I got shot from. But as of right now, I have never worked with UI before, so I don't even know where to start. In order to explain the second good thing about the placement of those sensors, I will need to gather a few things, so see you in a second. This is a piezoelectric sensor. You bend it, press it, smash it with a hammer, and it's going to create a voltage across those two wires. The amount of voltage created depends on how hard and how fast you manage to deform the sensor. And this is exactly where we go back to how the sensor is placed in the rover. Let's imagine that this thing that I don't know the English name for is the side of the rover. The sensor would be placed somewhere around here. With this thing, I'm going to show you that if I've got any kind of force acting at an angle to the side, it's going to bend pretty easily, meaning that the sensor is going to be able to read some data. Let's now imagine that you've got forces being parallel to the side. If you want to move it down, move it to the side, it's just not going to bend the sensor basically at all, which is extremely cool. Most of the parallel forces that I have just talked about come from the rover moving around uneven terrain. If it's going to move over hills or just bump into holes, these forces will be created, but they are not going to be visible to the sensor, which is extremely great because this limits the amount of false positives that I've got in my system, which is amazing to be honest. At first I wanted to use the IMU sensor that's inside the rover for registering the hits. As you might imagine, the moment you get hit, this tank creates a spike on one or more axes of the IMU. This can then be used basically the same way the readings from the piezo sensors are being used. However, Problems start the moment the rover starts moving. The IMU creates far too much noise for me to distinguish the real hits from this thing just bumping into a random stuff. That's why I've decided to switch to the piezo sensors, you know basically all the rest of the story. That's why this is the end of the video, so thank you for watching and see you next time.